is awesome. Amen. Well, you heard the announcement last week that today we have a special guest who has a testimony, a very riveting testimony. A testimony that will make you appreciate God the more if you have it at this point. How God is able to take somebody from the dungeon of sin, bring him out, clean him, and make him look like he has never been in a dungeon. That is what Jesus Christ wants to do in the lives of the people here in the city of Greensboro, in the county of Guilford, the state of North Carolina. If you are struggling, I'm talking not financial struggles, I'm talking about struggling in sin, with sin. Know today that there is hope for you. That Jesus Christ, the same Jesus Christ who delivered this gentleman and all of us is well able and stands ready to deliver you also from the predicament that you find yourself in. I want to bring on my beloved brother, Dr. Maxwell Adinkra. Amen. Amen. Dr. Maxwell Adinkra. Yeah, he said. He, he's, he's a doctor by divine order. The Bible tells us that the word of God says that we lay hands on the sick and they do what? Recover. When you call people that do that as doctors, is that right? But well, we thank God for the divine doctors because when the divine doctors lay hands and heal, when you are healed, there's no side effect. There's no negative side effect. The only side effect you have is the joy of the Lord and the peace of God. And you've been dancing all the day long. That is why this gentleman, you see him on Facebook, you see him dancing. When I saw him on Facebook, I thought he was this tall. You see how, how, how Facebook, and even television does to you, defines you differently. But you see this gentleman either on Food Lion parking lot, you see him at the uh, more Four Seasons and Friendly, everywhere where there is an open space where the Lord says stop and preach, he's there. And he's preaching, he's dancing, and when you think, you look at him, you think he's out of his mind. But no. As far as the world is concerned, he's out of his mind. But with God, no. The angelic host around him, and the joy of the Lord with him. Amen. So we have here Dr. Adinkra, Maxwell Adinkra, and his beautiful wife, who happens to be one of my daughters. Amen. She was here at the very beginning and she is back. Amen. So we thank God for you. You hear more about this, his wife, because it's all tied in the testimony. So, Dr. Maxwell Adinkra, the city of Greensboro, the county of Guilford, the state of North Carolina, we all welcome him. Let's welcome him and it's good to give his testimony. Now, normally I want to ask you questions, but I think I want you to just start. Tell us, just open your heart and tell us. Let the Lord lead you. Tell us what He has put in your heart. Praise the Lord. I know you could shout more than that because God has done so much for you. We thank you, Father. We glorify you. We thank you. Before I start and I go in today's program, I want to say, let's say a word of prayer. So you could go on your knees and let's say a word of prayer. Father, we thank you, God, we glorify you. There is no name beneath, there is no name above except the mighty name of Jesus. A name that is mentioned every knee bow and every tongue confers. We serve the mighty God. He is the God from the beginning and He is the God to the end. He is the Alpha, He is the Omega. Father, this evening we come before you, Jehovah. Every power, every principality, every wickedness. Father, we command it to stop. We command it because God, you said that all powers, all wickedness are under our feet because the one who is in us is greater than the one who is out there. So, Father, hallow this moment in Jesus Christ's mighty name. Amen. 
You know, before I go in, uh, you see, God is a mighty God. He's an amazing God. They say that life begins at 40. But I say to you, that your life begins the day that you hear from God. Life does not begin at 40. No. Life, it does not begin when you have money. No. Life, it does not begin when you build a mansion. No. Your life does not begin when you win a lottery. No. Your life does not begin when you get married. No. Your life does not begin when you build the biggest mansion and you win the presidency. No. Your life begins the day that you hear from God. That is the very day your life begins. So I would like to read from the book of Genesis. In the book of Genesis chapter 12 to 3. It says, The Lord had said to Abram, Leave your country, your people, your father's house, household, and go to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and I will, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all the people on, on, on earth will be blessed through you. Through you. You see, nobody have ever heard of Abraham, right? Until the day that God spoke to him. Amen. So Abraham was there all the while. Nobody have heard of Abraham. Abraham was there in his father's house. And who knows what Abraham was doing? But nobody have ever heard of Abraham. There is somebody who have built a mighty mansion, but nobody ever heard of him. There is somebody who is receiving a degree, but nobody have ever heard of him. But you see, the scriptures started the life of Abraham the moment he heard from God. So Abraham, life began the moment he heard the voice of God. So your life has not begun until you hear from God. I am speaking to somebody. You see, we live a life thinking that we have made it. We live a life thinking that we have reached all that we want. We live this life thinking that the world belongs to us. We are gangsters. We are bad. We are so bad. The girls love me. Oh yeah, they love me. I got three baby mamas. Oh, I have made it. You see, all these are vanity upon vanity. So nobody knows what Abraham was doing. But the moment Abraham heard the voice of God and he began to walk by the word of God, that is the moment heaven started recording what Abraham was about to do. Your blessing does not start until you begin to walk in obedience to the word of God. Amen. I'm speaking to somebody this evening. You see, I have lived that life. I have walked that life. I thought I made it. I thought I was really enjoying life. But just like I started, they say life begins at 40. But let me define life to somebody. Your life does not start until you hear from God. Your life does not start until you begin to walk in the word of God. Because it says in the beginning was the word, and the word was of God. The love of God is upon somebody this evening. And I'm talking to somebody. The moment you begin to walk according to the word of God, that is the moment heaven begins to record your life. So every life that you are living, every house that you are building, all the girls that you are chasing, everything that you have, unless it is according to the wishes of God, it is vanity. So to put my life in a nutshell, when I was a little boy, there was something that was stirring inside of me. There was something that was inside of me that I began to notice that when my friends were chasing women, there was something inside of me that was pushing me. When my friends were drinking, there was something inside of me that was pushing me. But you see, as you are growing, you begin to yearn to belong. You want to belong to the crowd. 
You want to belong to the group. You want to belong so that people will see you. But until God see you, nobody has seen you. Because the presence of men will lead to your death. But the leadership of God will lead to eternal life. So my life begins. In 1999, me and my couple of friends, we went to this mountain in Africa. We called it Achia Mountains. And that time I was, I wanted to know who I am. Because I was that age that I was feeling myself. You know, the teenagers, you look in the mirror, you feel good. You know, I, I was feeling myself. But at the same time too, there was something that was staring inside of me. So I was contemplating. You see, the Holy Spirit was trying to direct me. And the world was trying to, was trying to redirect me. So there was a conflict in my soul. There was this confusion in my heart. I was trying to find myself. Just like the teenagers of these days. They're trying to find themselves. Just like the children of these days. They're trying to find themselves. Just like the high schools. They're trying to find themselves. But until you find God, you haven't found yourself. So I made that decision to go to the mountains. And when I went to the mountains, I spent a couple of days, maybe five days. And we fasted and we prayed. And I was young. I didn't know what I was saying. But to be mind to tell somebody, God is not entertainment. God is not a joke. Everything that I said, God took it. Even though I did not take it serious, God is a serious God. I made a covenant with God. Say, God, if you protect me all the days of my life, I will serve you. You see, everything that I asked of God that day, not that I believe it, I know he gave it to me. Every prayer request I took to that mountain, God honored it. But when I came down in 1999, after five days on the mountain, I made a decision. I am too cute to serve God. <laughs> you know, I, I am too young to serve God. Man, there are too many girls around for me to spend my life serving God. There are too many alcohol out there for me to serve God. I wanted to have fun. I want to be part of the crowd. So God, whatever that you have given to me, I don't want it. Everything you have placed inside my soul, I don't want it. Every prophetic gift you have placed in my soul, I don't want it. Every healing gift you have placed in my soul, I don't want it. That day, when I got home, I went to the beer bar and get drunk because the Holy Spirit I, you see, have you, you see how well, is somebody trying to kick somebody out? I know the Holy Spirit is holy, so I have to drink to kick him out. So I'm like, you know what? I can take this holiness. I can take this conviction because I want to change gas and you are pushing me. I want to drink and you are pushing me. I want to smoke and you are pushing me. You know what? I'm going to drink so that you will stop bothering me. So I started drinking and the Holy Spirit left me. So, my testimony today is 20 years of wilderness, 1999 to 2018. I wasted years in this wilderness, trying to find myself, trying to please men, trying to fulfill a destiny with my own will, with my own strength. And that is how so many people are living their life. They are selling drugs, trying to fulfill a destiny they are not destined to leave. So they end up in prison. So many girls trying to fulfill a destiny that haven't been destined to them, ending up wasting their life. I wasted 20 years in the wilderness. I got married and I brought my wilderness to my marriage. You see, the first time I stepped foot in America, I was arrested at the airport for drugs, which I was not carrying any drugs. But when they let me go that night, imagine my first day in America with nobody to meet me at the airport. Where am I going? But that was the growing pains 
of sorrow, agony, a life without God. A life without God will lead you in the path of agony. A life without God will lead you in a life of pain. A life without God will lead you to destruction. A life without God is a waste of life. I got married and I brought my wilderness into that marriage. I was an alcoholic. A man who is not faithful to God will not be faithful to the wife. A man who is not faithful to God will not be faithful to his children. A man who is not faithful to God will not be faithful to nobody. I live my life fulfilling my own desires. I live my life fulfilling all, all that I want to fulfill. I live that life trying to fulfill something. Something that took me on the wrong path. So this is a testimony of the mercy of God. This is a testimony of the glory of God. Amen. This is a testimony of the goodness of God. This is a testimony of a God who is a covenant keeper. This is a testimony of God who never sleeps, who never slumber. Amen. This is the testimony of God who stays and never leaves when everybody has left you. So my life of distraction started with this beautiful lady. You see, when you are married, and your husband was somebody like me, you know, you are going to go through the fire. And I put her through the fire. My life, when I moved to Greensboro, my wife had a car. It was a, it was a Honda, Honda Civic, right? Oh, I drove that car to the hell and back. Everywhere I was drunk in this car, chasing women with this car, tracks with this car, I end up towing up the car. But my wife had mercy on me and she bought me another car. What car was that? Uh, it, it was a point, I was the point no, it wasn't, that, it wasn't the point yet, but it was a different car that he bought me. But I started the same life with it, drinking, drugs, chasing women, living that her life. Until one day I crashed the car on holding rope and I hit the pole. When I hit that pole, the cops came. So when the cops came, they arrested me. But when I got to the back of the car, I remember that God who I met at the mountains. So I went on my knees and I said that if you are truly that God that I had a covenant with, I want you to prove yourself. You know what? We talk to God, this is my last time. I will never do it again. Right? God, God, this is my last time. But see, God knows your heart. He knows inside of you. He's a loving God. He's a merciful God. Not that he knows that you are good, but because he knows that we are sinful. Yet when we were sinners, this God came and he took upon himself the flesh of a man and he went through the tribulation. He went through the suffering. Yet he knows that we were sinners. So it is not how good we are. It is not how beautiful you are. We are. It is the grace that sustains you. Hallelujah. It is the grace that sustains me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when these cops came, and I was the back of the car, I saw one cop go into my car. I had beer bottles, and I had some alcohol in the car. So I think my wife was coming. Yeah, my wife. I really put you through a lot. I'm sorry, baby. So when the cops came, and the other cops were coming, there was nothing in the car. I left the car with bottles and beer cans, but when the cruises came, there were no bottles in the car. I can't explain it. So when this cop was taking me to the jail cells, he started talking to me. He said, young man, I don't know why, but a cop who have arrested me started advising me. A cop who have arrested me started telling me about God. A cop, a cop who have arrested me started having sympathy on me. He took me to the jail cells. I don't know what he wrote on the paper, but when the judge came, he said this dude, this guy, was sleeping in his car. He was probably tired, so let him sleep in.
it up in his dear selves. So the case was close. Praise the Lord. That is the God that we serve. You see, I did not keep my part of the deal, but he is the God. He keep on keeping on. He keep on keeping on. When you are not good, he is good. When you are bad, he is good. When you are not faithful, he is faithful. When you are not merciful, he is merciful. Because he never changes. That is he. He is a loving, faithful God. My wife bailed me out. That car was pretty torn up. It was looking at the camouflage and the, the front was white, the side was black, because we were patching the cars up, we were patching it up. <laughs> so, so when you see my car, you see this guy is up to no good. <laughs> my car defines me. <laughs> I, I was a chameleon. My car. <laughs> so, That went on for a while. Their drinking got worse. Their unfaithfulness got worse. I started drinking to work. Their unfaithfulness got so bad. I one time left my little son at home just to go get some drugs. And my wife was at work. And I ran a red light, I think it was on Florida Street, and they arrested me. My wife remembered that after they called. Or I work and I was in jail and I spent that night, I think I spent that night in jail. Something like that. I've been too much in jail, I forgot how many times I've been in jail. So, I think it was like three times or I forgot. But, two, three. My, my wife knows, you know, she keeps the records. <laughs> so, when they arrested, when I got back home, I try to change. You see, I have got to the point in my life where every money I earn from work, I am drinking with it. I can't pay my bills, but I am drinking with the money. I can't pay my bills, but I am drinking with whatever I am earning. I am drinking when I go to work. So they end up giving me a warning. But what I was so, you see, the sin is heavy. Now, at this point of my life, my sin began to take hold of me. At this point of my life, my sin became so powerful that I could not sleep unless I have to drink. My sin became so, became so powerful that I was overwhelmed. I got to have the alcohol. I got to chase the woman out there. I got to do the drugs. I, even the drugs was not even satisfying me. So I went to the pills. The pills was not even getting me high enough. Right now, I think the only thing that could get me high is high itself. I started selling my stuff. I would sell my watch at the pawn shop just to get a $10 deal. And I couldn't pay for it. Ten dollars, I could not come with the ten dollars at the end of the month because I have go over it. I have drink, 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 and borrow, borrow, borrow. So they end up keeping a hundred dollar watch for ten dollars. I was so drunk one time that I end up hitting somebody's car at uh, I think it was East College, uh, New Garden Road. That night I was so drunk, I hit the car and I he hit another car. So the cops came, they arrested me, and they took me to the Cone Hospital and they handcuffed me to the to the bed. It was I think it was, it was in March, 2016 March. It was cold that day. So when the doctor came and said you could not do that to him because he's too drunk. So when they let me go, I ran out of the hospital. Forgetting that they have my ID. I mean, you can run from the law, but they know where you live. That's so stupid of me. I was not even thinking straight. <laughs> so they, so they sent me the court dates, and I hired a lawyer. And my lawyer told me in my face, and he said, "Look, you are going to do some time. You are going to do some time." I was so tired of life that time. I was trying. I was struggling to get out of alcohol, to get out of the life I was living by myself. Because now, my sin has become too heavy for me to carry. I always tell people that sin can become very heavy. 
my sin became so heavy that I could not sleep. So I started seeking the face of God again. I started searching for the God that I met on the mountains again. Because there was this staring that was coming back. You see, there was this staring that was coming back. My marriage was in the gutters. Nothing seems to be working. But then God, through prayers, told the sister that this was what this is what was going to happen on the court date. So I could not believe it, but to bring the long story short. When the judge called the case and I was about to be sentenced, I already know that I was going to spend some time in jail. So my wife, we already talked about it. That time I don't know if we were talking because I was really not in the, in the right frame of mind. But when we went to the court, the, the, the court and the judge called the case, just like God had spoken, he is a God who has exalted his word above himself. When God speaks, it come to pass. When God prophesies, he exercise on it. I was not good. I was not merciful. But God was merciful. I was not keeping my end bargain of the covenant. But God was keeping his end part of the covenant. So when the judge called the case, I was at the courtroom at 9 o'clock in the morning. But I left 5 o'clock in the evening. Because the cop, the policemen who have arrested me, they could not find him. My case filed. If they were going to stand on to judge me, something has happened to it. So they have to go back to the police station. It took them the whole day because they, the judge said, this case, I'm not going to let it go. The people who were supposed to come and testify against me, they did not show up. The cop who arrested me have quit the job. The, I mean, the courtroom was silence. He's the God who will silence your accusers, even when you don't deserve it. That's the kind of God that we said. He's the God when he shows up, every knee bow. He's the God when he shows up, your enemies flee. He is that kind of God. And God showed up that day at the court. God showed up and he showed up. And that God was merciful to me. That God was so gracious to me. I was supposed to go to jail, but I came back home as a free man. I did not know why I came home. I did not know why I made it home. But through his mercy, I made it home. You know what my, my, my lawyer told me? My lawyer looked at me and he said, I have never seen this before. I said, yeah, because my God is a God you have never seen before. You see, the thing is, now I should have been saved, right? But I went back to my drinking. I went back to my ways. My marriage was going in the goddess. My son and my relationship, my home was on fire. There was no happiness in my home. My beautiful wife was suffering. I have put this young girl through so much that sometimes when I go down on my knees and I, I begin to pray, I say, God, you sent me an angel. Because it is not any woman that will stay with an alcoholic, who stay with a drug addict, who stay with a nobody, and still pray for him because my wife keep on praying for me because my wife keep on keeping on because my wife understood something I did not understand because my wife was always on her, on her knees interceding it came to a point I said we right now we have to divorce we were talking I'm like you know what I think I, I could do better out there I'm the man you know I'm the man I want divorce. You see, you, you be, if you don't have the Holy Spirit in you, if you don't have the knowledge and the wisdom of God in you, you become a toxic. You become poison everywhere you go. A man who does not know his God is a poison to his family. A woman who does not know his God is a poison 
into his family. I became a poison in my family. I became toxic to my own child. child. I became a toxic husband, abusive husband, and no good man. The alcohol became so bad that I decided to end it all. I decided to kill myself because I have had enough of this life. I have had enough of this life that I am running to nowhere. I have not enough of this life that I cannot keep money. I have had enough of this life. I cannot be a husband. I cannot keep money. I cannot be a father. There is nothing that is that good that's coming out of me. I got tired of this life. I decided to end it all. So that day I called my brother and I said, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end it because I'm tired of this life. Then I remembered something that we have this mighty God. Glory to you, Father. This God who came to my rescue at the court. This God, when he came upon the tomb of Lazarus, and Lazarus was dead for three days, and the family was wailing, this God looked up in heaven and he said Lazarus come out of that home he is the God of the living and he is the God of the dead even though I was dead because according to the book in the scriptures he says those who don't have the spirit of God in them even though you are alive you are dead so when I remembered this God I went before my, I went on my knees. I said, if there is this God, I am going to find him. If this God is real, and it's not just pastors speaking of him, I will find him. If this God is real, and it's not just in the book, in the Holy Scriptures, I want to see this God myself. Even though you have done miracles, I want to see you. Even though you have healed the sick, I want to see you. Yes. Even though they preach about you, I want to see you. I made that decision in 2018. And from January from 2018, every morning when I wake up at 5 o'clock, I go down on my knees, 5 to 6. I was praying every morning. There was nothing happening. I think these pastors have been playing with us. <laughs> from January, February, April, March. From March going, when I get, get up in the morning, I begin to feel that there was somebody coming in the apartment with me. When I get up in the morning to pray, I begin to have this joy. This joy, right? Like you are getting up to go meet a new girlfriend, right? So in the morning, I take a shower. I dress up and I go to my living room because there was joy Amen. waiting for me. Amen. Amen. That feeling, that time I didn't know, so I was calling it feeling, but it was the Holy Spirit. March ending, the Holy Spirit presence began to get stronger. I have stopped drinking, I have stopped chasing women, stopped the drugs, I was clean. The cleaner I get, the closer the Holy Spirit gets. The faithful I get, the closer the Holy Spirit gets. The more I read the scriptures, the more understanding I get. Things begin to make sense. I felt like there was a scale that had fallen yes. from my eyes. Yes. I felt like a newborn baby yes. who was trying to walk again. Yes. I felt like a, a blind man who has seen the world yes. for his first time. Yes. I felt like a newborn kid who has started to run. Yes. I was running to the scriptures when I get up in the morning. I was having this joy. I was loving my wife. 
I was loving my son. I begin to see the distractions that I have made. I begin to see the world in a different day. I begin to experience things I've never experienced before. The world begin to taste like honey. The world begin to taste like honey. I'm a white This keep on going. Then something begins to happen in my spirit. When I get up in the morning, after prayers, it's like my whole day being rolled up to me. I know exactly what's going to happen today. I know who I was going to meet. You don't have to speak to me. I know already what you're about to say. I begin to feel that like this God is really real. Then we ain't playing. Around November, the sharing has become so powerful in my apartment that around November 2018, after I finished praying, I was about to go and sleep in my bed. And as I was about to jump in the bed, all I saw was I was not in my bedroom, I was somewhere else. There was this big place, this big park, and there was this mighty man in this cloud. You can look at his face. You can't look at the glory. You can't. You can't even stare. You can't even look at him. That is how strong. That is how strong the presence was. That is how strong the presence was. And in the hand of this man was this mighty horn. And he said, come and get it. I was moving towards this cloud. There were not, I was not by myself, there were a lot of people. And when I turned around, the whole world was on fire. When I turned around, there were trees, and the trees were burning. When I turned around, there were leaves falling. And before the leaves could hit the floor, it turned to ashes. When I turned around, the very ground was rotten with maggots. When I turned around, there was nothing to turn around for. I found myself back in my room. Glory. You know what? Sometimes when I look around in America, in the world, not, I yearn for nothing. Nothing tastes. I have no taste. I have no feelings. I am numb to the things of this world. Because I have seen something beyond the grave. I have seen something beyond. Something that every time I see a fellow brother drinking alcohol, I go down on my knees, I say, Father, forgive me. Something that when I see a sister, I say, God, forgive her. Something when I see gangsters, drug dealers, alcoholics, womanizers, I say, God, forgive them. Something when I see lesbianism gay, say, God, forgive them. I have seen something. Something that stirs my soul. I have seen something. Something that won't let me sleep. I have seen something. Something that pushes me every day. Something that encourages me every day. So, man of God, if you see me out there dancing, if you see me out there preaching, I am not crazy. I am not mad. I just want the world to know that the creator of this world is coming. I just want the world to know that this world have an end. And if you are talking to yourself that they've been saying from the beginning of time that the world is ending but the world has not end, I have news for you. If the world is not going to end, your time will end. Yes. 
because you are not going to live forever. But according to the scriptures, it's appointed to man to live, and after death there is judgment. You are going to stand before the judgment throne of God, and you are going to give account for everything that you did with your life. And I am not going to say the scriptures say, I am saying because I have seen something beyond the grave. Amen. You can take the scriptures from me. My faith in God is solidified. Amen. You can take the scriptures from me. My knowledge and wisdom lies in the arms of God. Yes, God. I have no more life to live except the life of Christ. I, I have not, nothing more to give. Just like Peter told the cripple. He said, you want silver? You want gold? We have none. But in the name of Jesus, stand up and walk. So this afternoon, in the name of Jesus, wherever that you are, get up and walk. Get up and accept Jesus Christ. Get up and seek God. life. Jesus Christ is life. I did seek and I found him. I did search and I found him. You see, everywhere that is written in the scriptures, it's not a story. It's a mystery that you have to search and find. There is nothing called lie in the scriptures. Everything is true. If you follow the word of God, so just like I started from the beginning, life does not begin at 40. Life begins when you hear from God. Yes. My life began when I heard from God again. And things begin to make sense. I became a husband again. I became a father again. I became a man again. Hallelujah. If you go to the book of John, in the book of John 11:25, he says, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection, the life. The one who believes in one who, the one who believes will live even though they die. The one who believe, they will leave. I started believing God. I started to walk in the word of God. I started to trust the word of God. I started to walk in the knowledge and the wisdom of God. The world began to open up and I begin to see the world for what the world is. There is nothing good in this world except the word of God. Because it says in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And who is the word? The word is Jesus Christ. My life changed. I could go on and speak and speak of the things that God have done. But there's one thing that I want to add on. One time I was... August 2000, August 2019, August 6, I was at the job and the woman came to the job. And as the woman was lying on the stretcher, the woman passed out. And they were trying to resuscitate, trying to resuscitate, 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 right? Resuscitate. My wife, my wife knows better than I do. She's speaking better than English. So. so they did their best. The nurses did their best. This woman could not come back to life. So they lay her on the street, on the floor. And we were doing the CPR. Everybody going back and forth. We're doing the CPR. Back and forth. We have, we have called the EMS. Everything. We are doing our best to bring this woman back. She has 10 purple blue. Look like 10 minutes. Nothing is happening. Let me go and try. I'm doing the CPR. Then I said, something stirred in my spirit. I said, if there is this God that I serve and his Lord that powerful, God, I begin to pray and doing the CPR. 
And for the first time in my life, I have smoked weed before, I have drank alcohol before, I have get high before, but the power that came over me that day, I have never experienced that before, and I have never experienced it after. Something came to that room, and I believe everybody felt it. Something so powerful that I was sweating all over me. That woman opened his eyes, began to throw up blood. I felt so strong that I could carry the whole building. That power that came over me, I could not explain it. But I know it was God. There have been so many things in my life that I cannot explain. But he's a covenant keeping God who keep on keeping his covenant. So this evening, I don't want to take all your time. But if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, you can accept Jesus Christ today. Because if I, I want to speak of what God has been doing and is doing, it will take the whole day. So my little testimony I have for you is Jesus Christ is God. And God is Jesus Christ. Without him, there is no life. And the scriptures say that when he ascended, he took captives with him. He went to the hells and opened the doors of hell. Jesus Christ has bought you of that precious blood. You are free from sin. You are free from sickness. You are free from disease. You are free from oppression. The power of God is calling somebody. There is too much goodness and mercy. There is too much grace. In the name of God, there is favor. In the name of Jesus, there is refuge. Those who have found Jesus, they have found life. May God bless you.
It sets you free. It sets your heart on fire. Dr. Adingra, powerful testimony. When I heard your testimony, I heard everything that you said that we experienced. And one thing that I know for sure, that when you come at that crossroad and you really have met Jesus Christ, you'll be doing what you are doing. Amen. Because when you pick me up at Zoom the Tech, he put me in the street of Zoom the Tech to preach. And from Zoom the Tech all the way to the US when I came here, my wife is there. Street ministry. Street! And that's one thing that I appreciate so much about what God is doing. You do. If not going to any four walls somewhere to try to identify, and, no, no, you are in the street. That is what the Lord has called us to do. And I really appreciate that. Look, there are greater things that God is going to do. Yeah, we are not done. We are not done. Hallelujah. We are not done. This is the beginning. Because this message has been heard by the whole world. Our testimonies have been heard by the whole world. How the Lord delivered us. You were thinking of committing suicide. In 1974, I was thinking of committing suicide. As who's the tech? In boarding school. I was always telling you, you know, when I sat, when I sat there and I'm listening, I heard your testimony that you gave. Yes, I said, Is it me, right? Yes, sir. You went to the high school, you talked about it. you didn't take even that part. Where the school fees, what were you doing the school fees for, your daddy and all those things. You come back and give us all this testimony. You are coming back. Amen. Because you know the reason why is that because there are people walking the streets right. in the same situation That's right. that need to hear. That's right. That need to hear. Our uh, testimony. We overcome by our words of testimony. That testimony is a message. Carries weight. When we give our testimony, don't worry about the money and those things. God will handle all of that. Yes. Ours is not to seek fame. It's to tell exactly what God That's right. has done. Yes. That's right. Francisca. Was the and you recognize her? That was your daughter. That's my wife's, Mama Dora's daughter. She and her sister. They were just close at close. Who would, who would have thought that would, you know? But God, hey, hey, hey. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Now, those of you who are, are over there on YouTube land and Facebook land, you can see that I am just saturated with uh, divine embarrassment. Hallelujah. God is the one who embarrasses us with all his blessings. Powerful testimony. And I don't know anybody who has heard this testimony and you find yourself in the same state and we want to remain in that state. How many times the Lord delivered him? How many times the Lord had mercy upon him? Not in Ghana alone, but here in Greensboro. And the city, the police officers can attest to that. The jailhouse can attest to that. It is God alone who brings you out of jail. Who brings you out of the courthouse. Who brings you, causes even the case. God says it's a foolish case. And it's foolish. Foolish finito. We are blessed. Yes, my God. Brother, we're blessed. Yes. And like I said, this is the beginning. You see this thing? Look at this. Yes, my God. All this, all of this will be all built around. They built around us. And it is for the work of God. For people like you, whose heart is to be so. And you stand in the public domain to proclaim Christ. This is where God wants you to stand and declare to the people. But they have to hear our testimony. Don't you try faith. Hallelujah. 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 Ancient of days, as old as you are. As old as you are. You remain the same. Yeah, I saw 
Let the lesbian know that there is no hope for her, that you will deliver her. You did not create her to be a lesbian, nor did you create her to be a homosexual. There is no hope, you will deliver them. It is Satan who is deceiving them and making them think that way. But Jesus Christ will deliver them and set them free. Let the transgender know that it is not your will for him to be a transgender. Deliver in the name of Jesus Christ. Let deliverance come in the city of Greensboro, in the county of Guilford, in the state of North Carolina, the nation of America. Let yokes be broken. And all over the world, let this testimony go. Yes. Once upon a time, yes. there was a man by name Adinkra yes. who was yes. wondering, yes. You delivered him. Yes. Yes. Do this for your glory and for your honor. Amen. I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, for your son. You who have begun this work with him, yes. just as you took us, my wife and I, from 1985, in the streets of Greensboro, all the way to this time. So Lord, I pray that you carry him and establish him. Yes, Lord. You are yet looking for many more Maxwell class who stand in the corners of every city and all every state who will not be looking for buildings, but they are looking for parking lots that you can stand yes. to declare your word to whoever will hear. Amen. And yes, Lord, I pray, every need of his, you will supply. Yes. You will supply every need of his. He will never lack. You will strengthen his marriage. You will bless his child. Yes. And yes, the children that will be coming. You raise them up to be generational changers who will change generations for Christ and Him crucified. Bless Him. Father, bless Him. And bless Him again. Amen. Thank you for a night just like this. Yes, you will bring Him back Amen. and He will come and share more. Yes, God. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, we thank you. Amen. Father, we thank you. Amen. Let your anointing continue to rest upon him. Amen. Not a double portion, Amen. but a trillion portion. Amen. A trillion portion. Amen. Continue to embolden him. Amen. From how many will be that bold? Continue to give him that boldness. Yes. As he stands in the parking lot. Yes, Cover him. Cover him, make him invisible yes, to the eyes of those with wicked machinations. Yes, yes. But visible in the eyes of those who seek after you, O oh God, yes. in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. Every word that will come out of his mouth, let it be fire. Amen. That will burn everything that is of the enemy. And let it be life to those who need to have life. In Jesus Christ's name, Lord, we've prayed. Thank you, Lord, again. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for Francisca. May your hands upon her heal. Heal. Cause her to recover in every situation. Bless the work of her hands. She stood faithfully with her husband. Bless her. Father, bless her. Continue to bless her. Let your virtue continue to increase. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. 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 And the saints of God we shall say, and the saints of God we shall say, I have my liberty, I have my 